What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today I wanted to talk about create, using the extension Curvaloft to create an onion domes, domescape in SketchUp. Um, if you're looking for more information on SketchUp extensions, make sure to check out my free SketchUp extensions guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start by drawing a circle to use as kind of a base that we're then going to draw everything else off of. Um, and what we need to do is we need to take a look at an image of one of these onion domes. And so we're just going to Google image search um, one of these onion domes. And if you look at these, um, you can see how this is made up of a number of different um, pieces in here and so what we want to do is we want to create a circle that's going to have the same number of segments as we're going to want pieces because that's going to make it a lot easier to create our shape and so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to draw our circle and in this case I'm assuming that this circle is going to have 32 of these onion pieces total so when I first activate the circle tool I'm going to type in the value 32 and then we'll go ahead and draw our circle and what that's going to do is that's going to create a circle that has 32 segments in it. And if you drew your circle and it has less segments than that, you can come in here and adjust the number of segments by typing in a new value in the entity info. I'm going to leave this at 36. I'm going to erase out my default model. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line up and we're going to use this to create a box. And so I'm just going to draw a box on here. Um, that we're going to use in order to rough out the shape of this before we use an extension in order to fill in the skin. And so I'm going to start off and actually the way these uh, domes work, it actually makes sense for your dome or your box to extend out a little bit more than your circle. So I'm going to do something like this. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the arc tool to draw an arc along this face. And so sometimes it helps to um, find a point on this face, usually along the blue axis here, and then hold the shift key in order to lock to that axis. That way this isn't jumping around on you. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off and I'm just going to draw an arc like this one. And then from there, I'm going to start kind of continuing the arc by drawing edges like this. And so all we've really done is just drawn this curved edge in here that we can then use in order to uh, create a skin width. And so the other thing you might do is you might continue this up a little bit because really at the top of these, these turn into like a, uh, like a tapered cylinder shape. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this to select the whole thing. I'm just going to use the rotate tool in copy mode. So just activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key. And then you're going to tap the control key in order to turn on copy mode. And now I'm just going to set a base point in the middle. I'm going to click. And I'm going to set another point over here. And so what that's going to give me is that's going to give me two edges that are going to be kind of the same width. And so that's a good starting point. But what we want to do is we want to have another edge in here that's going to extend out a little bit further. And there's a few different ways you could do that. You could come in here and draw that manually. I'm going to use the scale tool in order to do that. So I'm just going to rotate this over. And then I'm just going to select this edge by doing a shift click. And I'm just going to use the scale tool to scale this out just a little bit. And so one thing about that that might be helpful, because you can see how this actually went out on the red axis so it didn't go straight out, is you may want that middle piece to be the one that's actually along the red axis. So I'm just going to rotate this whole thing so this is along the red axis, just because the scale tool will line up with the axis a little bit better. So once I've rotated this, I'm just going to activate the scale tool. I'm just going to scale this out a little bit. So when I scale it out, it's going to look something like this. And so now that we have something like this, what we can do is we can use the extension Curvaloft to come in here and draw a skin across this. And so the way that's going to work is you're going to come in here and we're just going to select these different edges. So I'm going to select these edges just by doing a shift click. And honestly, you could probably do a right to left 
select in order to select as much of this as you can before you use curve aloft. Um, but we're just going to select these three edges, and you you just want the you don't want any of this extra geometry or these lines selected. You just want these three edges in here, and the reason for that is because we're going to use what's known as loft by spline. Well, what loft by spline is going to do is that's going to create an edge in here based on that line or based on those three lines. So now if I single click, you can see how what that does is that creates a face in here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the edges that were in here and I'm going to deselect this object and I'm going to hide them. So I'm just going to go up to edit, hide. And so what that leaves me with is that leaves me with this, uh, this kind of skin shape right in here. Well now, all you have to do is just use the rotate tool in copy mode to place one and then type in times and the number of copies you want to place. So in this case I'm going to type in, I think it's actually probably like 32. Or 35 and hit the enter key. And what that's going to do is that's going to copy this skin piece all the way around. So what that gives me is that gives me this nice dome shape in here. And so once you have this, you can drag a box around it and you can use the scale tool in order to adjust the way that it looks. And one other thing I might do while this is still centered on the origin is I might come in here and draw a line up. and then draw a circle from this point, which didn't do what I wanted it to do. There we go. And then you might use the follow me tool to create a sphere up here. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, something like that. And that's all adjustable. You can change the way that you do this. Um, you can kind of change your approach depending on what you want this to look like. But you can add that sphere in here. You could also um, you could also extrude a cone up in here if you wanted to do that. And so the last thing you could do if you wanted to is you could also use the extension Fredo scale in order to twist this. And so I'm going to make this sphere a group, but then I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to use what's known as box twisting. Well, what box twisting is going to do is that's going to allow us to take an object. and give it a twist rotation. So I'm just gonna type in a value like 45 degrees or something like that, and that's gonna twist this shape 45 degrees. And you can see how that's coming in here and working on that, but that's taking a little while because it's adjusting a lot of geometry. But then if I click out of it, you see this gives a pretty good view of this. You might have to come in here and heal a little bit of geometry and then maybe hide that by using the eraser tool. But you can see how you can use this to create a twisted dome as well. So, and then from there, all you would have to do is come in here and select each one of these if you wanted to apply like a different color or something like that. You could just come in here and select them and then apply the color that way. So, and then if you wanted this to be completely closed in, one thing you could do, and I'd recommend making a copy before you do this, but one thing you could do is just take the whole thing and explode it. And then all you'd have to do is draw an edge across the bottom and you'd be able to fill this face in. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Had you thought about this method for doing this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.